All right, we're back in the kitchen. Welcome to the Yee Chocolate Extravaganza. Today we have Brooke from Female Foodie. Hello. Who's gonna be sharing with us the funnest family-centered kind of holiday-themed recipe. We're yes. gonna be making their family's peanut butter balls. We previously talked about the family connection and all the history and the amazing things that Brooke does through Female Foodie. So if you didn't get a chance to watch that, make sure you jump over and catch that because we talked about some fun family history, but also Brooke is amazing and does so much for the food community, not only here in Salt Lake, but all across the country. Oh, so thanks, Heather. make sure to check her website out and all the fun things she does there. But today, tell us what we're going to be making. So again, peanut butter balls, okay. and this is We've been making this in my family for as long as I can remember during Christmas time. It's the perfect treat if you love chocolate and peanut butter. Who doesn't? And there are nuts. <laughs> um, so it's simple, it's delicious, and again, we make it every single year. And these are all ingredients that we feel like most likely you have in your pantry, especially if you've got kids. If I run out of peanut butter, I know exactly <laughs> when like my kids are like, uh, excuse me, mom, yeah. we need peanut what, butter. What are we gonna eat? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell, let's see. So. So going to the ingredients, peanut butter. This is just chunky, skippy peanut butter, right? Yes, go skippy, go jiff. It's not the moment to get the all natural peanut butter. We want the good stuff that has sugar in it and you know plenty of fat, so go generic for the peanut butter. I was excited to see that it's crunchy because I do think that those extra peanuts bring such a great element of flavor in there that you yep. don't always get when you go creamy. They give you flavor and they also have texture. We're gonna, um, in a minute, put them in the food processor. So we will kind of make a creamy blend of ingredients for the center, but you're still going to get some texture in there mm -hmm. too. So crunchy awesome. is the way to go. Awesome. So we've got peanut butter, powdered sugar, and butter. Can't go and wrong that's with it, right? So that's the base. You just, we, I mean, you can use a hand, uh, a stand mixer or hand mixer. We traditionally always use the uh, Cuisinart for okay. this. Okay, and so like when we asked, she's like, well, we always just use the food processor because later on we're gonna be chopping up the nuts and things like that. And going back to the connection with Brooke's mom's side, she's like, well, I think she just did it in the food processor because it was one less dish. One less dish. Which as moms and busy people, we can appreciate that. So if we always. can accommodate <laughs> one less thing to wash, absolutely. For sure. And this recipe, um, you'll notice that it calls for toasted nuts, mm -hmm. but in the notes, if you read it, it says a lot of times my mom didn't toast the nuts. She would just um, throw them in the food processor and chop them up. So if you're kind of crunch for time or you want to keep things um, short and sweet, you can do that before this step, before we get the peanut butter and the butter in there and just set them aside and they'll be ready to go. In the blog, your mom mentions like it was like my busy time when like Brooke was in diapers and how she said, I just let those things go. But I think the thing that is so important that we can teach you anything today is that Life is busy, things get hectic, but there are some things that you can just do to still continue these memories. And sure. so she was willing to forgo the roasting, which is fine. So don't let these things like roasting nuts or having a certain tool or, you know, those little things that sometimes we allow to get in the way of us creating these memories and dishes. Like just go with it and make it your own and don't let these things intimidate you out of it. <laughs> yes, and especially for this recipe. This recipe is really forgiving. I will say like, the the not natural peanut butter is a big deal but other than that like just go for it this is a really forgiving recipe it's perfect to make with the kids or someone in your family who's not confident in the kitchen we're always looking for a reason to buy yeah. the good <laughs> peanut butter anyway right <laughs> okay so let's get started sweet okay yeah, all we're going to do is just put these three ingredients in the food processor and then pulse or blend until it's smooth okay let's so. do it all right so in goes the peanut butter powdered sugar and then of course some butter so this butter is soft enough to the point where it's going to incorporate with our other ingredients really easily but it's not totally melted because we do want these peanut butter balls to set up once we roll yes. them together okay now we'll just turn it on you just let this run you're not like a i mean a pulse or you can do both i am always like always with pulse. A, yeah with a food process i'm always oh i will let that go for too long See, and I wouldn't just turn that on and walk away. Like, I turned it on for a second, but... So let's have a look after a few seconds. We've got kind of a more crumbly mixture, which is totally fine. It will depend on, you know, how much butter you use, how much peanut butter. So we're just going to add a little bit of milk or cream just to kind of thicken it up a okay. little bit. So I'm just going to pour in, like, 
about a tablespoon and then see how that goes because it will gather pretty quickly. Let's do a little more. So you can see how it's starting to gather. Oh yeah. But we want it a little bit more, just a teeny bit more. So gathered. do you want it to look kind of like a cookie dough? Like, like a, like a, on the dry end of a cookie okay. dough. So okay. this to me, oh, we're getting really close. <laughs> I think we just need a teeny, teeny bit more. Okay. I think that's perfect. Okay. So this is what we want in the end. We want it to be something that we can grab with our hands, form into a ball, not something that's sticky. You can see that that's not sticking to my fingers. Um, but it's also... But it's holding together. It's holding together. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I love it. That's it. So, we have our base. It took a whole no, two minutes to put together. No time at all. At our house, we keep things simple. So we've got washed hands, and we're just going to roll these into one-inch balls. And this is... Just, just eyeball it, not quite golf ball size, so about that big. Well, and not worrying about like a cookie scoop or like having no. everything perfectly uniform because these aren't being baked. We're not worried about like, you know, say if your five-year-old made a small one while well, you have this big one. Exactly. Everything's and, and you certainly could use a cookie scoop. Sure. You could scoop them and roll them, but we're not doing what that. What five-year-old <laughs> wants to use a cookie scoop? <laughs> not when they can maybe lick their hands up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My mom made these for her wedding reception and they made them for weeks and weeks in advance. So this would be a really easy thing too if you have like a lot on your plate. You can make these days or weeks in advance. Yes. Throw them in the freezer. Or also keep on hand, you know, when like say <laughs> someone stops by and you're like, oh yes, I've got a treat for you too. <laughs> yes. You can yes. have them in a box in the freezer yeah, already. Yes. One less thing yes. to do. Yes. Oh, what a fun idea. So here we are, this is our half batch, but you can see they're similar in size. They don't have to be symmetrical. I mean, I feel like that's just nature to yeah. line them up. They can just be put on the tray as long as they're not sticking right next to each other. You get to this point and you put them in the fridge or if you want to make them even faster, put them in the freezer or if it's like snowing outside, just set them outside. all the time. We just would like cover them up and put them outside for 20, 30, well, especially <laughs> as you're preparing the other things, that's a great way to just save time. For so. sure. Okay, well, we'll go grab the ones we've got chilled and get some chocolate going. Okay. We are ready to get going with the fun kind of family-centered part. Too. We've got our chocolate melted. Today we chose to use the dark chocolate snaps from Van Leer. We liked that this was just a melt and go type of chocolate. We didn't worry about tempering, especially when we're combining it with so many other flavors. We've got the fun flavor from the peanut butter and then we were adding nuts. So we allowed the chocolate to kind of be just the, sh like the not this necessarily the centerpiece, but just a good accent to everything. Exactly. So, I mean, this is, this is the assembly line. We always start with the balls, which are now set. They're either been in the fridge or the freezer. And then we actually will dip them in the chocolate um, and then we will put them, roll them in nuts. Okay. And um, the recipe does call for partially coarsely chopped nuts and then nuts that have been processed. So we have both here. Um, again, if you need to just put them all in the food processor and pulse a few times, we did that several years too. So what we're going to do today is just kind of take a little bit of each. And the reason you do both is just for a little bit of varying texture. You'll notice that um, these finer kind of pulsed or ground nuts will get more into those crevices and mm -hmm. really coat the outside of the peanut butter ball, but then the, the coarse nuts are going to give it some really great texture and it makes it look really pretty. I think it's also great because it shows people what they're eating. So sometimes when you get it too finely coarse, you <laughs> go like, like I don't know what nut this is. So say, yeah. if, you know, someone did love something on there, they can see that there's, yeah, okay, I'll just take a bite of that. <laughs> exactly. We usually use pecans or walnuts. So today we're using a combination of a both, which is great. If you have any kind of special nut allergy, I think we've done like almonds in the past for so you can get creative. The main thing here is you want texture and you want to coat the outside of the chocolate so that when you set it on your cookie sheet in the end, it doesn't stick to it and it's ready to go and to set up and then of course eat. Perfect. So okay. you will just take like a handful 
of each and then put it in a bowl. Mm -hmm. You could you could also just like combine all of them, but just, tray. yeah. Okay. This is nice too to keep them separate because you will get chocolate, chocolate. in here. And so then you're able to use more of your Yes, nuts. you're not contaminating um, the whole tray. So yeah, you could, you, I would just combine some and okay. we have a, a bowl for the chocolate, a bowl for the nuts. So I mean, it's pretty simple. It is really nice to have two people for this portion okay. of the recipe. My mom always taught me that you didn't want to waste chocolate. So the person dipping the peanut butter ball in the chocolate kind of needs to work fast. And then they immediately transfer it to the bowl with the nuts in it. Brooke mentioned earlier that in the past her mom would kind of get after it. She let it linger too long in the chocolate. Yes, so, exactly. So, so we'll, we'll definitely follow her technique. Yeah. <laughs> we want it to be coated in chocolate, but we don't want it like so thick and so coated. So I don't Especially even, if you yeah. go to buy it. Sometimes if you yeah. <laughs> need a handmade chocolate treat, the chocolate layer is so thick that you're like, oh, okay, thank you. So this will yes. just give a good accent. And you will notice too, the more you work your way through um, coating the balls and dipping them that the chocolate will firm up and so you'll have to work even faster Got it. the more you progress along. Got it. So just take take the peanut butter ball and just drop it in there. You want to have like some kind of spatula or spoon to just kind of coat it and then try to cover as much as you can. So do you use the side of the bowl to kind of help coat it without? I mean, there's no special technique. Okay. I just try to get it coated. You want it like that. Okay. And then we drop it straight in the nuts. And then do you pick it up and kind of toss it or am I rolling it? You do both. Okay. You want a coat, you can kind of throw some on top and then just, yeah. And you do kind of want to press in okay. a little bit to get those kind of finer nut pieces in there. I mean, it looks perfect. Okay. And once you get to this phase, you just put it right on the cookie sheet. I love it. So easy. Okay, we finished our assembly line. This took maybe five minutes to assemble I mean, things. you need to come over to my house from now on, Heather. You're I would like, love This is to. like the dream partner <laughs> to make a Christmas tree with. To be a part of the family tradition, I will be there. I okay, will wash great. the dishes too. <laughs> but overall, like super easy, super simple pantry ingredients that everyone has. Mm -hmm. But store these beautiful treats in your freezer and you'll have them on hand even after Christmas time when we all know we all need the, all those extra treats. Exactly, so. yeah. So that's all you do. Put them in the fridge after they're rolled to let them set and they are ready to inhale as you want. Have one, it. have five. It was, and it was so fun. We just had a little conversation and just rolled them together and then super easy. So hopefully this recipe finds a way into your family's traditions this year. Brooke, thank you for sharing this with us. Thanks for bringing Sai thank back to the you. extravaganza. Yes. We hope to have both of you a part of this for years to come, but thank you so much, Heather. Here, so. so great to be here. Thank you.